Left it all in the ring, and he did a great duty on the outside of the ring as well. Because I tell everyone, we all have greatness in us, but greatness is only determined by service. And it don't cost much to, be, to put a little bit of time of greatness in your life. Now, nah, you, you ain't got to be great at every little thing that you do, just a little bit of it. Well, you're matching up against Robert Hellenius in about two months on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view October 15th at Barclays Center. He's not an easy opponent. At all. And you could have easily come back and taken an opponent of lesser opposition. But instead, people are saying, wow, Hellenius, this is a very tough guy known as the Nordic Nightmare. Defeated Adam Kovnatsky twice. Why Hellenius in your comeback fight? I mean, why not? You know, uh... In my career, and even in my second reign career, you know, I always want to fight nothing but the best. I, I deserve it for myself, and I deserve it for the fans. And the fans deserve it for me to, to, for me to fight the best and nothing less, you know what I mean? Um, There's so much I can say about that as far as people fighting the best and, and, and making it. But it's just me. That's just my heart. That's just where I want to be, and I don't want to stop. I, I just want to keep continue to keep moving forward. The bronze bum is back. You know, hope I can be a light, an inspiration, a motivation to so many, not only people on the outside, but the fighters on the inside, you know. And um, uh, welcome. This show is going to be on uh, the Fight View 360 Boxing Podcast. And of course, uh, for those who are watching here on YouTube as well. And about five minutes or so, the Deontay Wilder versus Robert Herlinius press conference um, from the Barclays Center is going to be happening. It's going to be taking place on PBC on Fox pay-per-view October the 15th in Brooklyn in the Barclays Center. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight View 360. So in the next hour or so, we're going to uh, watch the press conference, provide some commentary, talk about the fight, talk about what I'm interested in in the fight. Caleb Plant and um, Anthony Durrell are also going to be at the press conference. Some facts to point out. Deontay Wilder, um, by the time he gets into the ring, it'll be exactly a year layoff, about a year and a week, since he was stopped by Tyson Fury brutally. Robert Hellenius got that upset win over Adam Kwanowski, also on that same card. It is important to note and to point out that both Robert Herlinius and Deontay Wilder are friends and they're sparring partners. Now, I don't like me personally. I don't like when fighters fight sparring partners. You know, meaning a sparring partner headlining a, a big event or a sparring partner in this case headlining a pay-per-view. You know, I mean, it's a good comeback fight for Deontay Wilder. I like the fight, but something doesn't sit right with me with it being a sparring partner. It's expected, I'm guessing, you know, at least by fans who are following the sport, it's expected that if Wilder wins, he'll go on to fight the winner of this weekend's fight. We have a very, very busy week. So there's going to be a lot of content on the YouTube channel, a lot of content on the podcast. It was my birthday yesterday. The big three nine I'm going to be 40 years old next year. So after Usyk Joshua 2, I decided to take some time off, decompress, a lot of stress going on, a lot of legal shit, a lot of legal fees. But we're back. We're going to be streaming every day, at least this week. And what is that? It keep popping up on the screen. Y'all see that? It's freaking me out. But it's going to be busy. So soon the uh, press conference is going to be starting for uh, Wilder Herlinius. Um, this weekend is Loser Tease and Andy Ruiz on PBC on Fox pay-per-view. September the 4th is a Sunday night fight. Remember, it's a Sunday night fight. Um, I'm not sure what the price of that pay-per-view is going to be, but I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to check on my uh, on my cable to see how much it's going to cost. We're going to be streaming this weekend, September the 4th, during the main event. During the main event of um, Andy Ruiz and Loser Ortiz. I really like that fight. Should it be pay-per-view? No. Wilder versus Hellenius shouldn't be pay-per-view. You know why these fights are pay-per-view? It's because Wilder, Wilder, Andrew Ruiz, and Luis Ortiz are all guaranteed a certain amount of money. 
and they can't fight on regular free TV Fox because the budget is not in the free TV shows. Just like a lot of these guys can't fight on Showtime. So therefore, the fans, because of the PBC pay scale, that's not our fault. That's not the fans' fault. But the PBC pay scale doesn't match what the economy, boxing economy, can produce. So that's why you have a lot of these fights flopping. You know, or pay-per-view numbers that would, that would be made public if it was a success, we don't hear nothing about. It's too many pay-per-views. Kids are going back to school. No matter where you are, gas is still above four dollars a gallon. And don't think don't get used to it. We're not supposed to get used to paying for gas. That's four dollars a gallon. So when you have September the 4th, a Sunday night, the night before Labor Day. OK, all right. Some kids went back to school this week. More kids are going back to school next week. OK, seventy five dollars. Thank you, Tito, in the chat for um, um, Andrew Weeds and Luis Ortiz. Then just a little over a month later, five weeks later, you got another pay-per-view, $74.99, Deontay Wilder versus Robert, Robert Hellenius. And then a month after that, the elusive, and a lot of people are starting to wonder if it's even going to happen this year or not, November's pay-per-view is supposed to be Terrence Crawford versus, excuse me, Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Jake Paul that's that's supposed to be November the 12th for the women in November the 19th, um, according to uh, Dan Rayfield. Then October, you're hearing that Jake Paul is going to be returning against Anderson Silva, likely going to be on Showtime pay-per-view. December's pay-per-view will likely be Tank Davis. Oh, and guess what? In two weeks, we got Canelo versus Golovkin three on the zone. Now, is this Wilder Hellenius pay-per-view going to be a success? I don't think so. But one thing for sure is Wilder is must-see TV. As I said, I'm being honest with you. If they wasn't sparring partners, like close sparring partners, I would be like, all right, cool. But the fact that, you know, they're sparring partners is the only real issue I have with the fight. The undercard as it stands right now is supposed to be Caleb Plant, former IBF champion, Taking on Anthony Durrell. If you didn't smell that, I listen, I knew this. I smelt this fight from a thousand paces. This is the most PBC fight you can possibly ever make. Caleb Plant versus Anthony Durrell in um, Caleb Plant's first fight back since losing to Canelo. By the time they step into the ring, it'll be 11 months ago when they fight Canelo. Um, November the 6th, he lost by um, 11 round stoppage. You had a lot of people thought he was winning that fight, too. Those pity pat punches. And then you got Anthony Durrell. By the way, let me read uh, Caleb Plant's record. 21-1 and one with 12 KOs. 30 years old, sweet hands, Plant. Uh, significant fights. Let's just read off his resume. He's fighting Andre Durrell. Anthony Durrell, excuse me. Before that, lost to Canelo. Before that, beat Caleb Truax. Defeated Vincent Fegan Boots, defeated Subway Mike Lee, Jose Utskatigi, Roger, Roger Leo Luna, Andrew Hernandez. And bro, that resume was all smoke and mirrors. Like, that's a blessing for him to get that Canelo fight because basically it was all about the belt. And there was some build up. You know, the, the press conference kicked things off. The fight was uh, uh, rumored to did around what, like 800,000 buys or so on Showtime. I don't think that Canelo versus Golovkin 3 on the zone is going to go going to do anywhere near that. But that's a whole different video we got to do. Uh, Anthony Durrell, Anthony the dog Durrell, 34, 2 and 2 with 25 KOs, 37 years old. Last fight was against Marco Hernandez. We stopped him and be, stopped him in four. Fight before that, he fought also. He was actually on Canelo versus um, uh, played undercard. Uh, he fought uh, Karan Davis where he fought to a uh, split draw before that loss stopped in nine by David Benavidez. Got that technical decision over Avni Yildirim. That fight was the reason why Avni Yildirim ended up getting Canelo. Like, you know, and that's, you know, that's the card. So I'm guessing, and remember, Deontay Wilder commands a lot of money. Don't be surprised 
if Deontay Wilder's guarantee, it's, a, it's, it's at least 10 million. We probably won't hear about it. But he's guaranteed a lot of money. By the way, this right here you're seeing on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, is the, um, the uh, stream link for the press conference, which is going to be starting any moment now. They're in the uh, Barclay Center. Deontay Wilder and Robert Herlinius and Caleb Plant and uh, Anthony Durrell. So how have you guys been? I got a podcast. We had a very successful launch and then I took a week off, like my birthday week, but we had something like 500 downloads. Um, but yeah, so the podcast world is really working out for me. It's a much cleaner feeling, you know, much more mature audience. But yeah, the uh, Fight View 360 boxing podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Google. We're finally indexed it everywhere. iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Amazon Music. And there is going to be exclusive episodes weekly that are podcast exclusive. And then I'm going to be uploading these press conferences or publishing these press conferences and my commentary of the press conferences, talking about the fights, you know, letting you know guys know what the prices are, undercard, and basically giving you a clean boxing experience. You kind of dig where I'm going with that? You know, so if it's sometimes, you know, you don't want to watch the videos, you want to be like, all right, let me go check on this fight, you know, see what's going on. But I haven't decided yet. <clears throat> If I'm going to upload or publish my post fight videos in podcast format, because I kind of feel that's cheesy, like of like publishing, you know, like 10, 20 minute clips. I feel like if you're going to publish something in a podcast format, this is my personal opinion from what I've learned, you know, and I'm still a novice with it, you know, um, you know, at least a half an hour. But I'm thinking that's what I'm going to be doing. But I do want you know, the podcast to be for podcast episodes, you know, like exclusive content with interviews, you know, so I've decided, um, I celebrated my birthday yesterday. Um, I'm on a whole weight loss journey, lost about 30 pounds or so in the last like three months. I'm going to be in the crib and I was looking at the boxing schedule. If you look at the boxing schedule, I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, if you look at the boxing schedule, it is heavy. Think about it. We got something of significance every week. So let me pull this up here from Dan Rayfield's website. Fight Freaks Unite. The best boxing schedule on the web. Big Dan here. Um, he uploads. I mean, he, he updates the schedule weekly. Where is it at? There we are. So let me just run down. Thanks for the uh, birthday wishes. So let's just run down what's... Um, What's coming up? By the way, real quick, I think that Pedraza did enough to beat Call Me this weekend. I think he did just enough. But let's just run it down, okay? Um, September the third, shit, that's this weekend. You got uh, Juan Francisco Estrada returning against uh, Argy, uh, Argy Cortez. I forgot all about that fight. Liam Smith is returning against um, Hassan uh, McQu McQuino. Natasha Jonas is on that card. That's going to be um, a boxer card, I'm guessing. You got, uh, of course, September the 4th this weekend on PBC on Fox pay-per-view. You're going to have Andy Ruiz versus Luis Ortiz, Isak Cruz versus Eduardo Ramirez, Abner Maris versus Miguel Flores, um, Rayo Venezuela versus Jezreel Corrales. That's, I like that card. Joey Spencer versus Kevin uh, um, Salgado, Raiz Aline versus Mike Planea. The Prince, Charles Martin returns against Devin Vargas, Juan Garcia versus Gumberto Mendoza. Anthony Cuba versus Oscar Perez. Anthony Garnica versus the TBA. By the way, we're waiting for the uh, press conference to start for uh, Wilder Hellenius. So as soon as it starts, we're going to go listen in. <clears throat> but that I like that. Like, honestly, um, in the chat, how do you feel about this, this card this Sunday night, the, the Ruiz Ortiz? I think this is a good card for a Sunday night, you know, especially with people going to be in for the holiday with the kids. You know, I like the card. I'm on, I'm being honest. I like the card because I'm looking at Ruiz Ortiz, Cruz Ramirez, Abner Maris returns against Flores, Rayo Venezuela versus Corrales. That's already four fights right there that I'm interested in that, you know, it's like, OK, there's a little bit of story behind each fight. For example, Venezuela is going up against a former uh, world champion in Jezreel Corrales. That's a very, very good fight. Abner Maris is returning after I forgot how long he's been off, but it's been years, you know, and people want to see how their eyes look. And he finally took his sunglasses off um, against Miguel Flores. You got Isai Cruz. OK, all right. A lot of people are expecting him to probably get Tank Davis again. And then you got the main event. Basically, it's like a career match for Luis Ortiz. And Andy Ruiz, if he loses, you know, but I like the card. 
You know, next week is the big one. Somebody's mouth is going to get shut. Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall. Now, there's a lot of promotion. I'm going to push the limits on promotion for that next week because we got to talk about how, like, what if Clarissa Shields lose? That's the storyline I'm going for next week. All that shit she's been talking. You know, a lot of UK fans, they respect her, but they kind of can't stand her. She can be real cringe sometimes. But I'm going to go deep with the storyline for that. That's going to be on ESPN Plus here in the States and on regular Sky Sports over in the UK. But that's Savannah Marshall. She ain't no joke. That girl can box. And I've said it. She fights like a female Tyson Fury. Trained by Peter Fury. Former trainer and uncle of Tyson Fury. Who trains Huey Fury. Like that girl can box. Let me tell you something. And then you got Michaela Mayer. Who? Being borrowed from top rank to go over to fight. You know, over in the UK against Alicia Baumgartner. Can Marshall handle the pressure? Clarissa, not right. Uh, we going to see. I, like she, we going to see. So that's September the 10th. Then the big one. Well, me and Big J already talked about the Paul Gallon fight. You guys got to go watch the Australian boxing podcast. You know, if, uh, if you want to hear about some Australian boxing. But then the big one the week after that, another big one. Canelo versus Golovkin 3. No real, like, I don't feel the buzz. Maybe it's starting to grow a little bit, but it doesn't really feel like there's a lot of buzz behind it, does it? I don't know. Now, the undercard, we did a whole stream, half an hour video on the undercard, but you guys don't watch my content. But anyway, the undercard, and also I did talk about it on the, um, on the uh, Fight View 360 Boxing Podcast, which the links are right down below in the description box here. Let me share some of them with you.